the present time, I just don't give a damn. Uh, who knows I'm gay? And who doesn't know? Uh, it makes no difference to me. And I just shudder at uh, the kind of closeted life I led years, years ago. And it's great to be free. And maybe just, I'm glad to have a few years at, at the end of my life when I can be really free. Some of them were very, very uncomfortable about sharing their age and they just did, refused to do that. And I think that the stigma within the gay community has really affected the way people talk about their age and, you know, believe that they're over the hill at, at a lot younger age than I think the general population. So I don't feel old at all. But someone would, a lot of people would probably, you know, 20 year olds would probably think that I was old. I'm 53. Like, I hate when people judge people of a different age. And it sucks because you don't know how realize of how much of a great person they are, you know? You can meet somebody who's um, like a mid-27 gay guy, but he's dumb as fuck. But you can meet a 16-year-old kid, and he's smart as hell. And I'm like, who are you gonna stick with? I stick with a 16-year-old because he knows what he wants to do in his life. He's a fun kid, and he likes to hang out. <laughs> Um, the way we deal with aging is using Aveda products as much as possible. It seems like there's a lot of emphasis on that in the community, um, you know, with so much uh, emphasis on youth and beauty, which is really societal. I don't think it's just the gay community. I mean, if you look at women's fashion magazines, it's kind of, in many cases, an unattainable look that we're uh, trying to achieve. I, I specifically think that um, when we get down to like understanding what we really want from each other, what we really want from ourselves, then I think you know, we will be able to understand that this like shallow kind of mediocre way of accepting each other and accepting ourselves really isn't going to sustain any quality of life. You know, we are constantly bombarded with, you know, himbos in the same way, you know, muscular male gods with large penises, you know, and, you know, unattainable good looks. I mean, the guys are often, you know, on steroids. So, um, I mean, they aren't even occurring in nature. So, you know, it just in the same way that a that a girl who maybe has dark features or is a little bit chunky or has, you know, wide hips would be intimidated by the images of, you know, 15-year-old airbrushed <laughs> anorexic models on, you know, their back. It, it, it does the same thing for any of the gay community that looks at these images constantly and feels that they can't measure up. And, I mean, I've always been aware of ageism in uh, in the gay community. I mean, there was always the notion when I was growing up, like um, I was remembering um, this queen had said, um, ooh, you went with that troll? <laughs> it was an older guy. And the other one said, yes, girl, but did you see that car? So there is this kind of like attitude of, I mean, it's not exactly prostitution, but it's kind of like, what can I get? You know, I'm young and hot and you're older, so you either have to have a big dick, money to spend, some kind of, something like a big car or, you know, some kind of scene status or whatever. How do we deal with aging in our community? Not so well. I, I, I think that gay men are kind of vain and 
aging is kind of like painful. The, the more you age and the further you get away from um, the ideal man image that we're, that's driven you know, into our heads on every single gay ad. I mean, even the ones for the AIDS medicines look like they just, you know, a million bucks, wow. I feel like it is a terrible, terrible situation to, to get old. <laughs> Um, I feel like it is completely unacceptable, um, and that's not my perspective. Terribly. Well, they, every, I, I don't know, the gay community is very narcissistic, and I don't know if there's anything to fix that. It's kind of hard to be the same sex that you're attracted to and look in the mirror and not, I mean, which is why gay people are probably so judgmental. You look in the mirror and you're either attracted to yourself or you're not. There is an element of self-hatred where we're saying, you know, we want, I mean, the, the dancers that we're hiring are straight or, um, you know, because they look the best or whatever. But is that because they don't have any queenie mannerisms because we hate those queenie mannerisms in ourselves? Um, you know, or is or, or the reason we're hiring straight bartenders because, you know, the, the, the same reason, they're, they're more butch, more unattainable? I think old is dead. <laughs> and that's really, maybe that's the definition that, that, that's in my brain, that's been instilled in my brain. If you're old, you're dead. If you're old, you're done. You know, you don't go out anymore. You don't have sex anymore. You don't, um, guys aren't attracted to you anymore. And uh, so I don't want to be old. If I'm old, I don't want to be around. You know, we are attracted to our same sex and it's, I don't know how, I don't know a way to naturally get around that. It's different with women, you know? Attracted to a girl, you don't judge yourself the same, but I know the gay people are a pretty bunch, and once they're not pretty, or once they see things that aren't pretty, they're very vocal about it. You know, there's no such thing as a fountain of youth, you know, and I believe that if you just, you know, be yourself, everything else is gonna fall into place. How did we lose our compassion? I don't know. Did, did we ever have it? I, I really don't know if we did. I mean, you know, for me personally, I mean, every or almost every personal's ads that I, I, that I would read in a, a gay publication since I can remember has said no fats, no fibs, and being both, you know, it's like, you know, you kind of feel like you're at the bottom of the totem pole in that respect, which is why, you know, you kind of migrate to a different totem pole and say your set of values doesn't matter so much. But it, it really, um, and so that I can be embraced as the goddess that I am. Um, but I, I think the gay community is, I mean, first of all, the body fascism is just crazy. And I mean, I even know of DJs who complain that they can't get work, even though they're great DJs with a great history of working the best clubs in New York City, if they don't have a gym physique or if they aren't good looking. I'm like, honey, you're, the music is in your ears. Why would you be hiring someone who, you know, I mean, are you gonna get up in the DJ booth and blow them? I mean, it's just, it's so absurd. Then just so you can put on an invite, a hot DJ. The, the, the whole obsession with youth, um, I understand it, because I'm kind of obsessed with youth myself, but it has nothing to do with being gay. It just has to do with, I don't, you know, I don't like getting old. I don't want to be old. Um, 30s gay death. Maybe they are thinking, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be a, a troll at 50 anyway, so let's just get a buttload to come and, you know, and party on down with drugs and booze, you know, who cares? Our heart's gonna give out anyway, you know, you might as well go out with a bang. We all inherently have this death wish. You know, we're ashamed of who we are, you know, as much as we can, can come out with this bravado about how openly gay we are and how proud to be gay we are. Deep down inside, you know, we have been instilled with this fear and this guilt and this shame about the way we came out. And uh, it, it, you know, I think in a lot of cases, the, the drugs, the, uh, the unsafe sex, the, 
you take risks all the time. You know, I just walking across the street, I can't tell you how many guys don't look both ways. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think we're just, we don't care if we die. Maybe we don't feel that we deserve anything meaningful. Maybe that's part of the self-hatred. I think that there's a lot of validity to that in that if you look at the gay magazines, the gay ads, they're all very young, you know, sexy kids, you know, in their 20s, maybe 30s, and they have gorgeous bodies. And I think that that has always been, whether it's conscious or unconscious, you have this ideal of what, you know, the, the gay man is supposed to look like. And I think a lot of people have really hard times with that. And I know that I've had challenges with that. It actually isn't old if you don't pay attention to the opinions of 22-year-olds. It's people who are obsessed with the opinions of 22-year-olds who feel ageism sting most sharply. If you see my tears, it's still cause it hurts me. I'm saying goodbye to a chapter that showed me love and broke it. Well, first off, young people ought to care about ageism because they're going to be old someday. I know it's like the most impossible thing to imagine when you're a younger gay man that you're going to be older. Trust me, it will happen if you're lucky. <laughs> the alternative isn't very good, you know, but it will happen. And you want that to be a good experience. And you want to have a full life. And when you're older, you want to experience a full and happy life as a gay senior as well. I know that I have been hung up on aging for a long time. Maybe it's having gray hair at an early age that's made me feel older. Maybe it's because I always had older friends or dated older guys and I had to hear them bitch about how they didn't feel as attractive or relevant to a younger gay community. I don't know. It's hard. Uh, to find a, to feel an identity of the gay community because it's so integrated that it's hard to experience the gay community. And you mentioned something really interesting. You said that you were feeling kind of kicked out of the gay community as you know, you go past 30. And it's funny because if you look at folks that are straight that you know might be getting past 30, are they really going out to the bars as much anymore? No, because they've got kids now for the most part. You know, they're raising families. They're having cocktail parties at home. So, so much of our gay life has been centered around these institutions like the bars, and as we age and mature and go through our own individual life changes as human beings, as American citizens, you know, these things that were so gay-centric, they don't really fit us anymore because we've reached a different generation now. Well, aging uh, comes for us all. Uh, I don't know if it, it needs a take. Uh, if it's sitting around waiting for us to have a take on it before it beats the fuck out of us as the years go by. It's not like uh, spring is waiting for us to have an opinion on it before it arrives either. Um, ageism, is, I think, uh, gets bandied, about, gets tossed around too much uh, as a term. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, sort of resentment uh, of the young and resentment of our desire, uh, sort of the, the desirability of, of youth. And so you can uh, instill anger in people who've aged out of that desirability stage of their lives. Um, and that will be called ageism. Uh, you know, this sort of like jacques pointing at the young and saying, you don't want to fuck me, I'm 50 now, you're ageist. That's not ageism. Uh, ageism is you got fired because you're old. You got, you know, somebody denied you an apartment, discriminated against on the basis of your age. People not wanting to fuck you is not discrimination. Ageism is as good a subject as any to be concerned with. It hasn't been high on the agenda because we've had AIDS to deal with and most people didn't live long enough to be considered part of an older population. Um, I'm 74. I guess I qualify for someone who might be experiencing ageism. I haven't, um, fortunately. I'm not even sure what you mean by that. Discrimination, um, services that aren't offered to us, whatever. This is something we need to address, which is about, the, about this, this moment in the history of gay life. Uh, increasingly, gays and lesbians are integrated into their families and starting families of their own. So gays and lesbians, who I think my age and younger, are going to have a social network when they're older and elderly. 
um, that a lot of gay men who are elderly now do not have. Um, hopefully that is an anomaly, and as you know, future generations of gay people grow up uh, living fully integrated lives that include family lives and possibility of children, uh, there's less isolation, less loneliness. The isolation and loneliness of the, of the generation that's retiring now of, of gay men, of those survivors, who again are likely to have seen their peer groups decimated by AIDS, um, that's something that we should be talking about and moving on and trying to uh, address to make sure that uh, senior citizen centers are places where gay guys, when they wind up and they have to go back in the closet or lesbians have to go back in the closet. Uh, and make sure that you know if two gay guys uh, fall in love in a nursing home, they can share a room. That, that rights have to be protected. Uh, you know, a lot of those environments are run by religious organizations, um, and a lot of them are. They can be terribly bigoted, unpleasant places, even for straight people to to wind up in. Um, you know, if we care about the freedoms won for us by the Stonewall generation, we should care about where they're going to spend the last years of their lives. I hope that younger people now can begin to look forward to the future with some sense of hope that there's going to be something there for them in terms of services, in terms of community, in terms of friendships, and in terms of social needs being met. Ageism is uh, uh, part of American culture. Uh, like uh, racism and sexism. And homophobia. Uh, and probably, uh, well, maybe except for the Ayatollahs, uh, uh, we'd be the strictest people in the world. Except for that. But it also has a poignant side for an older gay or lesbian person in that our contemporaries, that is the non-gay people we may associate with, are still from that old period of time and they've not come along with us necessarily. They've not changed as much with the times. So we welcome the change, but not everybody else is quite so cop copacetic with it. So when you end up in a, a nursing home, for example, terrible place to be if you're a gay or lesbian person unless you just have to be there. And most of us would do anything we could to stay away from that sort of an environment because we don't want to go back in the closet again. We've paid too much of a price to be where we're at now and we don't want to revert. And the feeling is in that kind of a setting, it's not gay friendly. And that's one of the things that I'm a little sad about is that we haven't taken care of our senior gay and lesbian people to the point where there are good places for them to age when it comes time to move for a, some sort of a care facility or assisted living. It's just not as good. Well, I'm a 44-year-old gay man myself, so I guess I should be intimately familiar with it if, uh, as you said, you're old when you're 30. I've had 14 years to wrestle with uh, ageism in the gay community. I haven't really encountered very much of it. Um, I don't go to neighbors. Uh, anymore. Uh, I recognize that there are places that are age appropriate uh, for me to go drinking and partying with my friends and places that aren't. Uh, you know, creepy old straight guys who hang out in frat bars uh, and, uh, you know, straight young people's pickup joints are considered pathetic and slightly ridiculous. It's only gays and lesbians, particularly gay men, who go on and on about the slings and arrows of ageist discrimination that they encounter when they go to a bar that's really kind of for 25 year olds. You know, if you're a 50-year-old in a bar full of 25-year-olds, all the 25-year-olds aren't the ones who are out of place or doing something wrong. It's you. There are bars for you. You know, and the problem is, you know, regarding bars as the center of life for the gay community, that if there isn't a bar for you or a bar you feel uh, you can walk into and everybody wants to suck your dick, that you have no place in the community. That's just horseshit. If all you have in your life at 50 is bars and the expectation that everyone should still want to suck your dick, you fucked your life up. There's not enough in your life. Uh, and that's your fault. That's not the community's fault. That's not something that's being done to you. People that feel like they're being discriminated against within the gay community or that they're too old or... Um, I would like that mindset to change and it would be my hope that they wouldn't um, buy into that and that 
they would embrace their age and their experience and what they have to offer the community and not take it personally that some 20-year-old thinks they're old because when we were 20, we thought people our age were old too, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, and what do we know? Not a lot. Well, first off, ageism really creates a wall and it creates a wall between the older and younger gay people in terms of uh, easy dialogue back and forth. The challenges I face at my age are gonna be different from the challenges I'll face at a different age, but realize I'm gonna get to that age eventually, so how can I address those needs of people now because I will be affected by it too. Um, so when it comes to something like ageism, it's important to realize that it goes both ways. We discriminate against people that are younger. They don't have experience. What do they know? They're naive. Uh, we discriminate against people that are older because, you know, they're old, they're tired, they're the way of the past. They're all about tradition and I want to have change now. But I think it's important to realize that, and it's such an easy thing for us to forget, that our populations are constantly shifting. You know, I'm no longer in, you know, the 14, 18 demographic anymore, thank God. Uh, from the aging standpoint, I would just like to see our community get more involved with their mentors and elders and, and uh, you know, respect that, that history that they have and that experience that they have. And Because I know I could help younger guys. You know, it's not all about what your hair looks like and, and who you're dating and, you know, and um, what's on sale. God, that is such stereotypical crap I just said, but, uh, <laughs> but that's what I hear. I, I think most older men that I know would, would welcome becoming a mentor to a younger person. And so for the younger person, I would say, look to that older gay man and make it clear that's all you want is a mentoring relationship. And I'm sure that he will respect that. I know I did that when I was younger with this older neighbor of mine. And I was rewarded by learning about life from Horst who lived in Berlin before the Nazis came to power and how he had to leave Berlin with his lover going to South Africa and then to China during the Second World War to save himself. And I learned so much from Horace by wanting him to be my mentor that it was just amazing to have had that relationship and a very fulfilling relationship to myself. It's kind of like talking to a Holocaust survivor. You read the accounts, you know, You've heard the rabbi talk about it, but actually talking to someone with a tattoo in their wrist, it's really powerful. By the same token, talking to someone that, you know, might have been at Stonewall or that, you know, might have been gay bashed or might have been at some political act up rally and hearing their story, no matter how ineloquent it might have been, it's just like, wow, you were there and I'm talking to you. I'm not just reading this in a book on a page. It was really powerful. It was, um, it was transformational. Aging issues force you, in a sense, to begin dealing with the non-gay world, perhaps more than you had been prior to aging. You're going to the doctor more often, so there alone, you know, you're faced to confront your sexuality with your healthcare professional. And it, you're also then, if you ever get stuck in it, I shouldn't say stuck, but if you have to go to a nursing home or a rest facility or care facility of any kind or adult home, uh, suddenly, you're a gay person, and you're usually amongst a lot of non-gay people. And it may not be the same environment you're used to. I shouldn't say may not be, it almost surely will not be. Well, I can, I can feel for contemporaries of mine. And we've had, uh, uh, we've had inquiries here from, from people who are, you know, would like so much to be in this atmosphere, but are scared to identify themselves as gay. And it, it's, it breaks your heart to, to contemplate that. We cave in easily. Those of us that are older cave into the closet much too easily. Uh, there's only a few of us that may be activist types that are much more open and, and want to be out. But I'll, even, even we occasionally will revert to the closet and cover the fact that we're uh, a gay person. 
and it's unfortunate, but it happens. They can't be free. That they're absolutely chained down with this horrible thing hanging, hanging over them. That they've got people they depend on or uh, people they, they need. Uh, that uh, they're scared to uh, uh, admit that, uh, that they're gay. One of the things I found that, uh, and I think a lot of gay people are in the same situation that have partners, you never realize that your partner is going to pass away at some point or you'll pass away and leave your partner alone. And so you're suddenly single again after many years. I was with my partner for 32 years. And so we created our own environment, our own living space, and we took care of one another. And you had a very supportive situation. You never think you're gonna end up needing additional care. No one wants to be alone when they die, or when they get sick and all of that. And um, you know, there are a lot of problems connected with that too. I, I, people who are in terrible relationships who are afraid to leave the, leave the lover because they don't wanna be alone. That's not healthy either. You know, I got plenty of, not plenty, but I have a number of older friends who are just miserable with their partners. But they got a partner, and, uh, and they go home to the misery. I don't want that either. I'd rather be alone. Fortunately, I have a, 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 wonderful, a wonderful partner. A partner doesn't want to marry me uh, because he sees mar the marriage as it currently stands doesn't give us anything. So it's, it's a sentimental thing, and he's not a sentimental person. Uh, um, but he's a loving person, and I don't think he's going to leave me because, because we're not married. I'm enjoying life. I, you can age and have a good life, but you have to sort of accept it as it comes. Oh, well, enjoy youth while it's there. Uh, do your best to take advantage, <laughs> to take advantage of it, and don't worry about what it feels like to be old you'll know soon enough. True. Well, it's great to be old. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's great to be 87. Uh, it's great to feel like a weed that uh, they haven't been able to exterminate. I think it's important not to fear growing older as a gay man. And while it may be not your goal in life to be, it is certainly something not to be feared and to realize that if you plan ahead, if you think a little bit about it and think about what your life would likely be like, that it can be a very rewarding experience. Once you, once you turn 80, you know that you've had more than your share. And, uh, you know, bring it on. And I'm, I'm not doing anything deliberately to bring it on, but uh, extinction is uh, uh, really not, not, not such a horrible prospect. There are a lot of memories that will be extinguished with me, unhappy ones that I'm just as happy not, not to remember. Uh, so to young people, I'd say, you know, uh, do your thing and, uh, uh, you know, try not to have bitter memories. Try not to do things that, that you'd be sorry for. Cover up the blue, send for some white, just watch as the clouds take over. They thought that a gay was different from a sissy. A gay was a, you know, sickening, creepy, pervert, child molester. And um, I didn't become that until much later. <laughs> <laughs> and to see those, the posters being carried that were making fun of the Mormon church, that were humorous, um, you know, use your magic underpants for good, not evil, uh, at one demo particularly, touched my soul. So. 
You got a hell of a program here. I hope you know it. I know. I Harvey Milk. I knew Harvey Milk. I knew him before he was elected. Uh, because I was a member of the CDC, that's the California Democratic Council. And there was a gay contingent. It's a, what would I tell Jerry Falwell? I'm, I'm, thank God you're dead, you bastard. You bastard, you. <laughs> Walk away, walk away from the one.